2,000 times 40 plus, looks like 30,000, plus uh, 40,000. Okay, that's 150,000. And I hope we get the right answer for R1. R1 is 150,000 divided by 60, 2,500. So that tells you we've been able to find the force at R1. Um, and R2, since it's symmetric, we, can we could do the same thing, but we can assume it's going to be the same. So R, R2 is equal to also 2,500. Now, it turns out that it wasn't necessary to use torques because the total upward force has to equal the total downward force. So the total downward force is 5,000. So each of R1 and R2 had to be half of that. However, that's uh, <clears throat> if this were not symmetrically loaded, so we know R1 and R2 have to be the same, then, uh, for instance, supposing you had an additional load, like a truck sitting here. Well, then you could use this torque method to find it, because the torque uh, method gets rid of, for instance, R2, and you can, uh, you could, they, they wouldn't be the same if you had a, a non-symmetric loading. All right, so that's, so now we know R1 and R2. Now we're going to, the rest of the problem is going to be worked out with uh, net forces, okay? Okay, so we're going we're gonna to take one joint at a time and consider the forces at, uh, at each joint. Now we know, let's consider a, uh, um, joint A. You can think of uh, the three member, or the two members here is attached to like, you know, a steel ball or something there. Uh, and let's consider the forces on the steel ball. Well, <coughs> there's, uh, there's two ways we can look at it. Uh, there's X and Y. Uh, we're using X this way and Y. Let's look at the Y forces uh, and use um, R1 is positive. It's going up. Okay. Um, now, the, uh, um, these are all equilateral triangles. We're going to need this angle. The angle is going to be 60 degrees, right? So, uh, the this member AC uh, doesn't give you, um, we're doing Y forces, let's look at this. Um, AC doesn't give you a Y uh, component, it's just purely X. The, the forces in the members have to be along the members. So uh, <clears throat> we have R1. So, uh, actually, R1 is pushing upward. The, the, the edge of the bridge pushes downward on whatever the post is. The post pushes upward. In order for it not to move, we have to have minus, um, you know, this member has to be pushing down on that joint. And so minus, uh, let's see, we have force like this. I'm going to call it force AB. Here's force AB. But we only want this component of it. And um, this is 60 degrees. So we're going to want force AB times sine of 60 degrees, right? Or right triangle. The two components are this and this. And we're interested in this. This is a right triangle. Uh, so um, we want no, we want cosine here because cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So uh, let's see. No, I'm sorry. We want sine. I was thinking of this angle. Sine. So sine 60 degrees equals uh, what we want, which is FABY over FAB. Okay, 
So FABY is FAB sine 60 degrees. All right? Now, that net force has to equal to zero. So, and we know R1. R1 is 2,500. So 2,500 equals FAB sine 60 degrees. And so we can say FAB must be 2,500 <coughs> divided by sine 60 degrees, which is 2,500 divided by sine 60. 2886.75. So we're going to put in 2887 pounds, okay? So now we know uh, this force, force in this member, and we know this. There's one more thing at this joint to do, and that's to find that force. Well, let's consider the X forces, all right? So at A, uh, we have. Um, the R1 doesn't contribute because it's vertical, but we do have um, the force uh, at uh, A. This is a point pushing down, right? We know it had to be pushing down because it had to compensate this, which means that actually this is in tension. I'm just going to uh, write a T here, okay? This is being pushed together. In order for it to push down at the edge, it has to be in tension. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, it's compression. I'm not doing well here. Compression. It's got to push downward. It's got to be pushed together, push uh, downward. Now, so that's pushing that way. Uh, the this one must be pulling it back this way. See, we're gonna we're gonna find this force, which is the x component of AB. And let's just go ahead and do it. It's cosine, um, cosine 60 degrees equals FABX over FAB, right? FABX over FAB. So we're going to say, and it's that, um, it's negative, right? Because it's pushing that way. So negative FAB. Uh, times cosine 60 degrees. <clears throat> now, um, now this one is pure FAC, right? Now, is this going to be, which way is this going to uh, have to do? It's going to have to be pulling this way. This is, has to be in tension. Put a little T there. Because it's got to be pulling this way because the other one's pushing. Otherwise, the joint couldn't be have net force zero on it. Okay, so cosine 60 degrees plus FAC equals zero. So FAC is going to equal FAB times cosine 60 degrees. And that is 2886.7. Let's store that here. Um, times cosine 60 degrees is 1443.4. 1443 pounds, okay? So we found everything involved at, at uh, joint A. Um, maybe we should keep a list over here. 